popular videos, and then girls buy my age clothes from that, and I also use WeChat to sell clothes too. Yeah, so she's been really supportive and active in the community, and we've been watching her develop her, her business here in China and, and connecting with some of the third is some of you, hopefully everybody's getting a copy of my book, E-Commerce Gladiator. It's, um, it's launch day today. I'm not the best at launching. You guys, some of you guys might have an e-commerce company, and she's ventured off to start her own logistics company, working with mostly Chinese sellers on B2C exports. Uh, and today she's here sponsoring and supporting the show, to um, learn more about. And actually with this growth, uh, I think for the Europe and US market actually, it didn't really grow like the emergency market. I can see actually the Southeast Asia marketplaces like Shopee and Mazada, um, and also from Middle East, uh, those Russia is because of AliExpress. Um, so they're doing really well there. Uh, about 50% in numbers. In num merchant numbers, not about sales. A lot of my clients actually, they have massive products. But when I look at the, you know, when how they, like the translation, or the Photoshop, or you know, a lot of cars, you know, this kind of uh, UI. So how many of you have been in this situation? You needed a logo, a website, something, and you find the perfect person for the job, and you give them. I have worked with a lot of people helping them uh, figure out how it's not that you hire somebody and then they just go run off and bring you the finished product without any work on your side. Unfortunately, that's not how it works. And then if you have specific needs, whether those are time or and so what do we do to make sure that we're pulling the best work out of our, the creative view? Have any questions? Well, can we go to the end? People that have probably already vetted a lot of people in the view, potentially a lot of time and stress, uh, depending upon what your needs are, what your budget is, where you are. <laughs> Sorry, I got my retail price, but I would also use the vouchers because with vouchers, there's a, it's basically based on the variable because people, uh, which is under inventory, offer minimum order quantity. And then if you think about it logically, if you start selling two packs instead of one, more and more time with sponsored product ads, launching different options, they've gone the way of AdWords where they want you to pay the idiot tax. So they've introduced here close match, loose match, throwing sausage down the alleyway and then setting fire to your money at the bottom. Ah, <laughs> Roland, how you doing? Yeah. So for the indexing, you said about the description field. Yeah. So what's getting indexed? The old description field or A+, plus? which one of these? The, the product description, A+, plus isn't indexed on Amazon, it's indexed on Google, right? Your paper. So you have to draw four lines, straight lines, and connect all the dots, okay? and see how you're going to do it. Okay, so here, I just want to, okay? Because most of my, I mean, those are two. Most of my clients, they would never get here. They would never have 20% acres, I'm telling you. I mean, I'm not at least. So don't be, don't be afraid if you're new, if you don't really know how this works. It's normal, it sucks the same day, it will be all right, don't worry. So, another common is why, because they just do keyword targeting. But actually, as I told you at the beginning, one of my clients is doing most of its sales with product targeting only. And we're doing this, and we're targeting the category. And clicks, and let's say like 100 impressions, it's that 10% CTR, okay? So I just was looking from that perspective to don't hurt the listing. Freestyle, mainly it's um, like searches and page views and stuff like that. The third one is POEP. It's a purchase over existing purchase over your competitor. So that's about 12%, uh, 12.9%. The one before is about 15%. So um, we're, let's look at the next one after that. It's four, it's a keyword. How much share does it, does it take up? for that particular uh, ASIN. Same thing with conversion rate. It's converting 
of with for that keyword is add to cart, sir. And then there's other things that we'll get on. Uh, I don't talk about it here. But um, for um, forgot to use. this is actually a new item. So we're launching stuff, right? So we're teaching about launching. Money. Somebody just doing private label, throwing shit off, hundred reviews, first page, and start blowing out spiralizers. So uh, the emergency thing. Uh, have, I've done several brands over the years. I thought that was impressive. No. <laughs> December 2018, we made 10,000 SKUs. That's my goal for this right now. And so the way that we do this is a combination of software, automation tools, and, and just good graphics. I don't like full-time employees on this business. I only have two full-time people, one being a graphic, one being a copywriter, and my customer service to shit about it. So we've been able to test a lot of different uh, PPC strategies. I, Lazard back there does mine, and I'm fucking his brain like every day with different things that I want to try on my own my listing. So it, it's it's interesting. <laughs> Either the Scrooges, those bargain hunters, the average spenders, or the big spenders. Have you ever asked yourself, a, you know, if you decide all your prices based on your own financial limitations in the box, that limits your profit potential in a big way. So try and put yourself away when you are deciding how your pricing prices should be. And again, I'll come back to that. I'll help you to, to know what example. So let's say you are selling a knife sharpener. And look at the situation in the market. There's like over seven results. Everyone has like so many reviews, over a thousand, over three thousand reviews. And higher click through rate into the listing. I didn't invent this. I found this research uh, study done online on e-commerce products. They tested the two products. All the business with all the e-commerce platforms, you will find yourself very tiresome and not achieving your original create well undefended because it's not the same just building your business right you're building your business you make more money but then you also once you have that you want to keep your wealth growing so i created art because i saw an opportunity on the market about acquiring online businesses specifically amazon fba and i believe there's a great opportunity yeah, that's yeah. Put my phone in there. Mm -hmm. The first one is saffron fat. Oh, okay, congratulations. <laughs> one by one. Oh, congratulations. Which was the best because I hated track packs. Uh -huh. And then the Max really revolutionary. And you kind of see why I'm there. Alright, so does anyone know Ezra Firestone by the way? Yeah, so he's a, he's a buddy of mine, he's back in 2012. Uh, so, and I decided to find a stupid picture of myself. I couldn't find the one. Um, I started an eBay gig uh, from 1997 to 2001. I learned how to get into the I am collector of goods, because I was a collector. It has these surveys that show up that just ask you random questions. Well, guess what? Advertisers pay for this. And, um, and what it is is that the data they collect from this is instrumental to the marketing campaign. They have stamps in Europe, and then they get them on board, and then just feed them, like micro. Yes. Yeah. Sorry, I got a couple of questions. Uh, one is on the uh, uh, sales net. So I've been applying to, I mean, one of the agency recommended by Amazon, Get mm -hmm. Global, I think. Yeah, I understand that, crap. <laughs> yeah, I understand that. I mean, so we waited for the spam text for almost more than five months, just now? Um, I've been selling since 2013. I originally started selling with my brother out of my week in a cold warehouse. What happened to my four hour work week? <laughs> and so um, I quickly told my brother that, hey, this is not for me. Um, it was product. If you ask someone, say, uh, Five years ago, would you buy a dishwasher on Amazon? Almost everyone would be like, no, I would never buy that. I feel much more comfortable buying that in the store. Um, if you keep running the survey year after year, it's like it, you know, I assume that's an advantage. But how long will that last until everybody catches up? 
Yeah, um, yeah, I don't have like an exact time frame, but yeah, my always my theory has been in the past is that like you get to like about like 15 or so units, 20 units a day in sales, you can kind of fly below the range. But he's, he's, he's using your trademark, uh, and then Amazon uh, recently launched uh, this IP accelerator. Some of you may have heard of it, uh, and the way it works is if you use some of this is, here's the is there a laser on this. Uh, you go to avery.com. You can you don't have to buy their service. You just go there. You put in the EAN or the UPC code, and then it will generate a PDF file in uh, let's say 30 30 up labels sheets. So what you want to do is uh, you want to look at the weight of your product uh, inside its, its packaging, so ready for uh, exactly how it's going to be shipped to customers to be very, very lazy from Amazon's side. So if you do want to be a little bit more uh, risk taker, with cigars and drinking nice whiskey and a nice glass of wine and eating steak dinners, the year end are costing me something like $40,000. And what I like is business, entrepreneurship. I think that entrepreneurs are the greatest people on planet Earth. And that's because entrepreneurs solve problems. That's what we do. That is the essence of what we do. We solve problems. So I took what I know and what I like and I combined them. And I started a podcast called The Expat Life Show. I know, very original title, very creative. What would you recommend is the first thing for someone who would pursue this business? You know, like, it would be so easy to just give you advice and just be like, hey, you need to jump in and you need to do this, and I'd be remiss to do that. What I would say is reflect. Take some time. Like, as cheesy as it sounds, go sit in the park with a notebook and a pen and a piece of paper and start looking at some of these ideas and what you can teach. 2,500, 2,500. And uh, my students came from all these countries, okay? Okay, let me roughly tell you guys about what is watching. I, I know you guys are experts here, okay? And uh, the day I was thinking with, uh, I was thinking to Mike, I was saying that, you know, uh, what can I share here? I mean, everybody is like, most of them are like FBA experts, you know, these guys are so much better than me. So it's again, if I talk about FBA, I think you guys should be wrong, right? So I think it that way. Yeah, please take photos, okay? Please go ahead. But if I'm inside the photo, right, make sure I look good. Thank you. <laughs> if not, please delete the photo. Okay, so um, if you if you know Southeast Asia, well, these six main uh, main countries: Indonesia, Thailand, Malaysia, Singapore, Philippines, and Vietnam. Singapore is the smallest. Okay, I'm from Singapore, by the way. Doing the fulfillment, Team C doing the customer service and administration. Three teams. Okay, let me explain one by one what each, each team about. Okay, Team Two of fulfillment. Yeah, so I'm going to talk about now how to sell your e-commerce business uh, easier, faster, and for more money. So you have your, your revenue, so at the top, you got your sales, answer. Depending on the size of the business, the profit margin can get lower, but if you're looking to sell in seven figures, low multi-seven figures, you probably want to see a healthy 20%, 25%, I mean, and up is great. Able to ship on time and complete. Walmart's uh, number one issue, as the gentleman was talking earlier about not being out of stock, their number one issue is you've got to be in stock every day, you've got to ship on time, and you've got to be in full. If you don't do that, then you're going to be penalized. You're going to be penalized in terms of your distribution, and you're going to be penalized in terms of the cost. So we're able to, to help uh, folks improve their business. I'm sure people have been you know, like, I don't know if it's like a checklist you have to be held up, maybe finance inventory, but I mean, what, how would you help them or how would you vet them or give them feedback or what? So many people here are like based in Asia, even if they're Westerners like me, you know, we're not in the U.S. We, we maybe can set up a U.S. company, U.S. bank account, but we don't, we have, do we have to hire somebody to be there? Or can we work somebody like you? Is retail, I mean, most people here are online, I think a lot of people here talk about getting into Walmart and retail, but do they need to like have somebody in the U.S.? physically as a person, a sales rep, like a manufacturer's rep? I, I would just say that when you're working with the big box retailers, it's a great question, um, you, you can do it either way. You could approach global sourcing 
and you could do that locally. So, for example, if you were uh, here in China, you could work with the team and to increase upsells. So the thing about upsells on Amazon is it's kind of hard to do because they limit every way you can do anything. Um, these are not exactly compliant, okay? How many of you guys check out your listings on mobile once a week? Or ever? Okay, that's something you need to do, is to check it in different browsers, check it on mobile, check it on the app. Super important, sign up for like 20 ad networks, or at least five, put them in there, and then you can see what works better over time. Um, so, good ones to start with would be Google, obviously, um, AdRoll, um, Outbrain to Google and Rep content. You probably think, oh, I want to lose weight, or I want to get fit, or there's something I need to do. If you're buying the chef's knife, you're buying it for a reason, right? You buy things for a reason. It's not just super random. So you probably want to like improve your cooking. Um, maybe you're just sick of going to McDonald's every day and you're like, fuck it, I'm going to be great. I mean, um, yeah, because the competition is very uh, uh, competitive, fiercely, and uh, even some people are uh, attacking the uh, competitors uh, or do some hijacking stuff. And you know, like any more uh, cell accounts, uh, any more. And about 10 minute walk from here, it's not unlimited, it's one drink, you have one drink ticket. Um, and we still have to do it at a round table. I mean, round tables. I know we're exhausted. Or do you want to just have Gerard do his presentation? No one else has done it before. And why is Charles being in China? That's combining with your creativity and knowledge about what can be manufactured in China.